This video is an introduction to 3D drawing in AutoCAD. Before we really get into the drawing part, I want to clarify a couple points that may allow you to find your 3D drawing tools a little easier. It depends a little on whether you're using AutoCAD or AutoCAD architecture. You'll notice that I have several tabs in my ribbon, such as Solids, Surface, and View. Those are important tabs that you will be using as we get into drawing and modifying 3D objects. You may not have those by default. There's a couple options that you can look at in order to turn those ribbon tabs on. The first is to right click somewhere on the ribbon and go to tabs and then make sure that you have the proper tabs turned on by looking for the check marks because the solids one may be turned off and you simply need to click on the name solids to turn that tab on. The other option, especially if you're using regular AutoCAD or what's commonly known as vanilla AutoCAD, is you may have to switch workspaces. The workspace options are probably at the top left and bottom right, and there's a small icon that looks like a gear. And then uh, at the top left, it usually will actually show the entire name of the workspace. I'm going to go to the bottom right because I don't have mine at the top left. If you hover, it says workspace switching. Again, it looks like a small gear. If you select that, you can look for other workspaces. And in AutoCAD, regular AutoCAD or vanilla AutoCAD, for the default workspace that you get when AutoCAD is installed is 2D drafting. And you can switch the workspace to 3D drafting or 3D modeling by selecting it here from this little flyout. Again, either at the top left or bottom right. Um, so that might help you to find the 3D tools if they're not obvious in the beginning. Now, this is just an intro to working with 3D, um, some important options for controlling the view and your view angle and things like that. I will do additional videos in more advanced 3D solid modeling. The first thing we're going to do is draw a simple 3D box, and then I'll talk about how to kind of manipulate your, your view angle and your visual styles to show that box in different ways. So I'm on the solids tab in my ribbon. And you can see the very basic 3D solid modeling tools are the first icon. If you want to hit the little pull down, you can see your various options, box, cylinder, cone, sphere, pyramid, wedge, and torus. So right now I'm just going to do a very simple box and then uh, we'll talk about how to change your view angle. So I'm going to hit the box tool. And as you read the command line, it works a lot like the rectangle command. So I'm going to click a corner and now I'm going to just click another corner. I'm not too worried about the size right now because again this is just a basic introduction. And what's different uh, in the box command compared to the rectangle command is that you have to enter a height. In other words your third dimension is now an issue which it was not before when you were drawing in two dimensions. So remember your UCS icon in the lower left corner probably or it may be attached to your zero zero point in your drawing space it reminds you that X is your horizontal axis, Y is your vertical axis, and Z is the axis coming out of the screen at you when you're in a normal plan view. So that's what we're entering right now is basically your Z coordinate for the height. So I'm just going to enter something like 10 feet. I'm not sure how large that's going to be, but again, I'm uh, just kind of sketching right now, and we'll talk about being precise later. So now I have a simple box. It looks like a rectangle because I'm looking down at it in plan view. You have a few options in how to control your view angle relative to this solid. The first is using your view cube, which is at the upper right corner. So I can click on a corner of that little box in the upper right corner, the view cube, and it will switch you to what's known as an isometric view, essentially. It's a... Uh, it's a non perspective view. It's more of an orthogonal view, which means that the edges are parallel with one another. There's no vanishing points. Um, so it's not like a realistic view because there's no perspective in it. But it's great when you're working on a three-dimensional drawing to be able to see things three-dimensionally. So you can use the view cube as an easy way to switch yourself from one angle to another. So now you can see you also can access the left side, or I can go back to an isometric again and then go to the front side and then I can go back to the top view again. So that's an easy way to switch yourself around. 
Now, that also is nice because it helps students to keep a, a visual picture in their mind of what angle they're currently seeing the project in uh, relative to normal in terms of the compass or the world, so to speak. Your other option to control your views is going to the View tab of the ribbon. And you have some other options here. You'll notice that there is a, uh, an appearance panel, and that says top, bottom, left. You can hit that little pull down arrow, and it will fly out and allow you to go directly to specific isometric views. So if I want to go to southwest isometric, that's pretty much what I was already in. Now I can also go to southeast, and that's the other corner. And then obviously northeast and northwest are my other two corners. So you can rotate yourself around the objects. So keep in mind, you're not moving the object, you're just moving yourself relative to the objects. Now, some other helpful things here include orbit. Orbit allows you to kind of spin yourself around the objects. So if we click on that, you'll see that your cursor changes um, to this little orbit icon. And now you can spin yourself around the objects. Very handy when you're trying to kind of get inside a detailed complex model in order to see what's going on in a small area. Your standard zoom with your mouse wheel and pan still work, so those are the same as always. And a shortcut for using Orbit is holding down the Shift key and your middle scroll wheel on your mouse. Hold Shift and your middle scroll wheel on the mouse and that will take you to Orbit where you don't have to go up and find it on the ribbon. So that is a handy shortcut. Now, a lot of the other zoom options, those are the ones that I use on a normal um, process of working on a project, is really just those. Um, your standard zoom options otherwise work as far as zoom window and uh, those types of things. Um, they're still uh, available to you. The steering wheel is an option if you want to play with that. You could. You have the uh, ability to get to orbit there uh, and also zoom and pan and things like that. Personally, I haven't really used the steering wheel a whole lot because I've, I'm a little more old school because I've been using 3D for a while and the steering wheel is kind of a new thing. So I don't really find it that useful, but maybe you will. The other important thing to understand when you're working in 3D views is your options for uh, the visual styles, as they call it. The easiest way to get to those choices is again on the view tab on your ribbon. And then you can see right now, mine is set to 2D wireframe. And that's why my object looks uh, kind of transparent, so to speak. Uh, I can look right through it as though it was made out of glass and see the edges very clearly. That's your standard 2D wireframe view. If you hit that pull down though, it gives you uh, several other options for your visual styles. And some of these are very helpful when you have a more complex project if it's wireframe, you're seeing so many thousands of lines over top of one another that it's hard to see what's going on. In that case, you can switch to some of these other views to see how they work. So there's conceptual. It makes everything opaque and, and kind of a shaded view. Uh, you can go through these on your own. I won't go through all of them now. Uh, hidden view is kind of like the wireframe, except it's opaque rather than transparent. Um, realistic is also a relatively um, commonly used older view. And it's harder to see the edges a little bit there, but it's a little bit more of a realistic view. Obviously, that's why it's named that. Um, if you do want the edges to show, you can go to Shaded with Edges. And to me, that's a nice one to use because you can see the edges easily, but it's still a shaded view where objects are opaque. Um, some of the newer options include X-Ray, and that's where it's somewhat transparent. And you can actually adjust the opacity in the ribbon. So that's kind of nice when you're trying to do something that's more diagrammatical or uh, a little bit less realistic. And there's also sketchy options if you want to do something that makes it look more sketchy. So you can play with these all you want. And you can adjust a lot of those settings by using the icons right underneath the Visual Styles pull down. So you can play with those as well in order to find a view that kind of works for whatever you're trying to do. So I'm going to go back to 2D wireframe as a standard kind of default option. And that's something to keep in mind is as you're working on a project, if you try to do a lot of work in some of those like realistic and shaded views, your computer will run slower, quite a bit slower sometimes. So I usually do 95% of my work in a wireframe view. 
but then I might step into a realistic or shaded view for a few seconds to kind of see what's going on. And then I go back to wireframe to continue my work. So keep that in mind that some of those will slow down your computer. And then another important thing to uh, understand is you can set up your viewports to whatever view types or options you want. So I have two viewports here, uh, which was the, the default setup when I went to my paper space. I can set up one of these in an isometric view, which is kind of how it is by default, and one of these is a top view. And then I can set up this one to be, uh, let's say, x-ray. And then this one I can leave in wireframe because I'm trying to represent a plan. So you can uh, have as many different viewports as you want and set them up in different ways in terms of the view direction like isometric or top or left or right and then in terms of the visual styles and like if i want this one to be shaded with edges i can do that and then this one can stay x-ray so you can uh, use your viewports to lay out three or four different options and view angles and visual styles of one project so those are kind of the very important basics to understand as we get into three-dimensional drawing so in the next couple of videos, I'll go through how to actually use all the solid modeling tools, not all of them, but the important ones, and uh, some other important concepts for three-dimensional drawing.